Dear students, in this video, we will see the proof of Cayley Hamilton theorem, which is very important for linear algebra students. Right? Do you know what is the statement of Cayley Hamilton theorem? Yes, it is every square matrix satisfies its characteristic equation. Right? Now, let us start our proof by considering a square matrix. Okay? So, here I have written a general n by n square matrix right and next we need its a characteristic equation because after all we want to prove something about its characteristic equation then recollect what is characteristic equation of a square matrix right yes it is determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to 0 where lambda is any real or complex number okay that means lambda is a constant now before proceeding further, okay, let me uh, explain some points with the help of some examples. Okay, I have already explained these points in my earlier video, but uh, for the sake of completeness, I explain them very quickly. Okay, please follow them thoroughly, right? Okay, with the help of these examples, okay, I want to make three important points. First one, I have considered here one 3 by 3 matrix and a 2 by 2 matrix. And first, I evaluated uh, the characteristic equation. Okay, if you observe that, the lambda is added here for the diagonal entries. Same is the case with the 2 by 2 also. But what is the characteristic equation of 2 by 2 matrix? It is a second degree polynomial equation, right? Second degree polynomial equation. Okay, and here it is third degree polynomial equation. So that means it is something to do with the order of the matrix. Okay, this is second point. And the third point is, what is the leading quotient here? The leading quotient here is minus 1. And but for a 2 by 2 matrix, the leading quotient is 1. Similarly, if you take 4 by 4 matrix, the leading quotient will be 1. And for 5 by 5 matrix, okay, it is minus 1. Then, therefore, the leading quotient is again uh, to do with the order of the matrix N. Therefore, uh, because it changes alternate to plus 1 and minus 1, so, to accommodate that, I have written here minus 1 whole cube, okay, for minus 1 and minus 1 whole square for plus 1. Similarly, if you consider an n by n matrix, okay, its characteristic equation will be of the form this, where you can find nth degree polynomial equation whose leading quotient is minus 1 to the power of n. We will put these things in words to write the next part of the proof. Ready? Right. See here. First thing, the characteristic equation of A is this form. Okay. The determinant where the lambda is added at the diagonal entries. Right. Now, if you expand this determinant, what do you get? As you observed, okay, if you expand this determinant, we will get the characteristic equation of A of this form. Because I have taken an n by n square matrix, I will get a polynomial equation of degree n and whose leading quotient is minus 1 to the power of n. That is what we have learned earlier, right? Yes. Again, uh, before uh, writing the next part of the proof, let us uh, make some more note points using some examples. Okay. Here it is. So, first uh, I see what is uh, a minus lambda i. Okay, it is a matrix because A is a square matrix, I is identity, A minus lambda is an identity, uh, sorry, is a square matrix. And whose elements are polynomials in lambda of degree 1 or constants. Constants means you can treat them as degree 0. Similarly, uh, the same case with the 2 by 2 matrix also. Either they are polynomials of degree 1 in lambda or constants that is degree 0. That is first point. Second point. Uh, is something to do with adjoint of this matrix. What is that? A minus lambda. Okay. So, if you find adjoint, that is nothing but cofactor matrix, uh, sorry, transpose of cofactor matrix. Okay. If you observe here, okay, either 3 by 3 or 2 by 2 case, okay, this is the adjoint. You see, for the 2 by 2 matrix, observe that each element in this matrix is a polynomial in lambda of degree less than or equal to 1. Here it is of degree 1, but here it is a constant, therefore of degree 0. Similarly, 
if you come to uh, 3 by 3 matrix okay you observe that it is a polynomial of degree 2 not 1 okay and here it is a polynomial of degree 1 and here it is a polynomial of degree 0 so each element in the matrix what matrix it is adjoint of a minus lambda i or polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 that is what i have written here see the first point okay similarly the second point okay uh, when you come to the second point okay you see that uh, this adjoint of a minus lambda i can be written like this by taking lambda square common okay write the quotients lambda into lambda quotients and remaining constants and it forms a matrix polynomial means uh, a polynomial whose quotients are matrices here b0 b1 b2 are 3 by 3 matrices because a is 3 by 3 basically similarly if you see the 2 by 2 matrix same case okay it is a first degree polynomial but uh, the matrices are the quotient matrices are 2 by 2 matrices because a is 2 by 2 matrix we will write the same things okay uh, in return in the next part right yeah now see if a is a n by n square matrix then each of the elements of matrix a minus lambda i is a polynomial in lambda of degree at most one at most one means either one or less than one okay and next something to do with adjoint so now i am not talking about a minus lambda i but adjoint of this matrix is every element of it is a polynomial in lambda of degree at most n minus 1 again at most means either it is a polynomial of degree n minus 1 or a polynomial of degree less than n minus 1 okay up to 0 also that means constant term also okay therefore you can express adjoint of the matrix as a matrix polynomial okay like this okay so adjoint of a minus lambda i can be expressed as a matrix polynomial of the form right this is what exactly we have observed with the previous examples. Now, do you understand this? Similarly, we will continue our proof. Okay, ah, of course, here B0, B1, Bn minus 1 or n by n matrices, square matrices. Now, uh, see the next point. Okay, uh, for writing the next part of the proof, we require these things. That is, if A is any square matrix, okay, any square matrix then this is true that is dt a, a into i is equal to a into adjoint a okay this is true for any, any square matrix therefore what we do is we replace matrix a with the matrix a minus lambda i and we arrive at this equation now what we do is we know what is a minus lambda i okay uh, that means uh, it is just characteristic polynomial okay and you know what is adjoint of a minus lambda just in the last slide we have written what is adjoint a minus lambda it is a matrix polynomial okay of degree n minus 1 we substitute these two things okay so first let us substitute okay so uh, the terms in the red refers to the terms in the red that is debt a minus lambda is this and adjoint of a minus lambda is this this is what we have observed in the previous uh, discussion now what we do is okay we'll go to the next slide and see that see that in this polynomial uh, in this equation okay actually this is a matrix equation and first we start with comparing lambda power n quotients on both sides of the above equation so what is the lambda power n quotient quotient is minus 1 to the power of n here and i here but what is the quotient on the right side is there lambda power n term? Directly not, but indirectly it is there. Because you can get lambda power n term by multiplying lambda power n minus 1 with a lambda. So what are the quotients? Minus i into b naught. Okay, that is what exactly we get here. So left side minus 1 to the power of n into i is equal to minus b naught. Similarly, let us compare the quotients of lambda power n minus 1. So how do you get lambda power n minus 1 quotient? On the left hand side it is very easy similarly again minus 1 to the power of n here and a1 here and i but when you come to the right hand side how do you get lambda power n minus 1 quotient there are two ways okay first way already there is lambda power n minus 1 term 
if you multiply this with okay the term free from lambda a into b not lambda n minus 1 that is one term a b not okay and also you will get lambda power n minus 1 term in another way by multiplying this lambda term with lambda power n minus 2 so then what will be the quotient minus b1 i b1 i means or i b1 means if you multiply with identity matrix you will get the same so that is how you get the next equation okay so minus 1 power a n into a1 i and continue let us continue the same with uh, lambda power n minus 2 quotients same here it is simply minus 1 power n into a2 into i on the left side but right side see here again a b1 that is direct lambda power n minus 2 quotient but you will also get next term that is in the lambda power n minus 3 you will get b2 multiplied by this lambda i you will get lambda power n minus 2 that is why you get again uh, b2 as the quotient of lambda power n minus 2. So this is the resultant equation. Similarly you continue with this by comparing uh, lambda power n minus 3 and lambda power n minus 4 like that up to lambda power 1 and lambda power 0 that is the terms free from lambda. Let us see it in the next slide. Okay, so what it is, so this is the equation, already we have these three equations, continuing like that, see the lambda quotients, so lambda quotients again, see here, uh, some this, the term free from lambda into lambda term here, okay, that is right side, okay, uh, left side anyhow it is uh, easy, and how do you get lambda term again, lambda into the term free from lambda. So that is how you got a b n minus 2, see here, into minus i into b n minus 1. So identity matrix multiplication, you will get the same matrix. On the left hand side, as usual, minus 1 to the power of n, a n minus 1 into i. That is what we have lambda quotient. Similarly, you see the terms free from lambda. So free from lambda means there is no lambda term here, a n i, of course, minus 1 to the power of n is there. And here, there is only one term free from lambda, okay, on the right hand side. What is that? Here a, here b n minus 1, multiplying together, you will get a b n minus 1, okay. So now you got uh, n plus 1 equations here, okay. What to do with this n plus 1 equations? I will show you in the next part. So these n plus 1 equations, each equation, suppose you take first equation, I multiply with a power n a power n is a matrix please remember if it is a matrix then what happens okay so, yeah first i multiply with a power n so i into a power n what do you get i into a power n is nothing but a power n only right that is what i had written here and minus n a b naught similarly second equation with a power n minus 1 so because here you have i you will get the same a power n minus 1 and multiplying with a power n minus 1 on the right side, you will get this a power n b naught minus a power n minus 1 b1. Similarly, you multiply third equation with a power n minus 2, you will get this. Okay. Last, uh, last but one, nth equation with a, you will get this. Okay. Simple a square b n minus 2 and a b n minus 1. And last multi last equation with i, that is a power 0 actually here. Right. And you will get the same equation. Now, what to do with the with these new equations. Uh, how many equations there are? n plus 1 new equations. And we'll, what we do is, so if you see this, okay, again, let us add all these equations, okay. If you see uh, right hand side, see here you have minus a n b naught, adding with plus a naught a n b naught, that will be cancelled. Similarly, minus a n minus 1 b 1 and plus a n minus 1 b 1, that is also cancelled. Similarly, this will be cancelled with the next term and see this will be cancelled with the previous term and a b n minus 1 will be cancelled here. That means all the right hand side is cancelled and you have 0, only 0, right. What is the left hand side? See here, minus 1 power a n, minus 1 power n, a1, a1, uh, a1 into a power n minus 1 and so on and so on, okay. And see this, by adding this, you will get this equation. Do you observe this? What is this? It is just nothing but substituting a in place of lambda in the characteristic equation. That is nothing but 
the matrix A satisfies its characteristic equation. 